Hello. So Lisa Belladonna just came out with another um, Mo Grandmother patch book. So I thought I would go back and talk about one of my favorite and most used patches um, in terms of what I do with both meditation and film music. Um, so not taking credit for this. This is definitely all her. Um, so this patch kind of centers around using the sample and hold to control its own speed. Um, so what we do is we take the sample and hold out to the malt and then we go back. So we're going to take the malt out and we're going to go to the rate in of the sample and hold. So what this does is now lower voltages go slower and higher voltages go faster. And you can kind of see this flashing light here happening. Um, so from there you can do a lot of different things. This can kind of be a whatever you want type of situation. So the sort of prime example is, let me find the right length patch cord here. We're going to go out of the malt and into the attenuator or attenuverter. And I find you kind of need this for a lot of applications of this because the sample and hold voltage is very high. Um, so we kind of use this to control how much is going out. And then we go into the pitch in. So I'm going to go into oscillator 2. And then let's just hear only oscillator 2. So we're going to put it in drone mode. And I've got my reverb turned up pretty far. And so it's just going to like, you know, run off the mysteries of the universe here, right? <laughs> so, you know, the attenuator, you can make it do more or less. You can flip it upside down. So what this will do is make you perceive lower notes as going faster and higher notes as going slower. <laughs> and then since I'm in drone mode, we could bring in the other oscillator. <laughs> okay, so that's one application. It's kind of a mysteries of the universe type of thing. Um, we could take our attenuator output and put it into the envelope amount. Oh, sorry. The cutoff input. There we are. Um, so what that will do is make these little pulses as the sample and hold moves the filter. So I find this very useful for meditation music. You know, pick a low note and drone. Um, another thing you can do is, and I do it a lot, is I take this output and I go to the, a lag processor. Um, so I've got one in the ARP 2600 and I just run a cable out to the lag processor and back. Um, what that does is prevent these spikes that are happening. Um, so it kind of more more like a, a ramp into these voltage changes. Okay, so there's another idea. We can also take the output and go back to the pitch and turn on hard sync. So you get nice harmonics there. And it doesn't have to be this, you know, drone. We can use the arpeggiator. Oops. We can use the arpeggiator. Having trouble pushing buttons, apparently. All right. So there's our arpeggiator. And okay. So. 
So then something that happens sort of here when you start using more timed stuff is that this no longer works, this um, sample and hold controlling its own rate. Um, so what I like to do is <clears throat> I take the gate out from the left side here and I go to the sink in and that makes it cooperate. <laughs> So there you can hear the harmonics are running in time with the arpeggiator. Um, another thing I thought of is you can take um, another out. This is going to be unattenuated, so it's a little can be a little tricky. And we go in the cutoff of the filter, so now we've got sort of a couple... Of Um, so that gives you kind of a cool little, like... <laughs> it's like almost talking at that point. And we can use the reverb. <laughs> Another thing I like to do is use the envelope amount in because this has an attenuator attached to it. And this is bringing in the envelope to this voltage, too. And as always, because this is plus and minus, we can go the other way. <laughs> All right, so I hope that gives you some ideas to try out. <laughs>